Now folks, since we don't have all day, and my allergies are killing me, so let's do this 2x for the speed. In 2018, a branch of Italian medium tanks with new auto-reloading mechanics was added. In 2021, they were joined by heavy tanks. And now, thanks to a lot of meticulous work, Italian tank destroyers will appear in the game. Only a few of the vehicles in this branch were ever physically built, and some of them only had incomplete design plans. But thanks to the surviving draft and archive materials, we managed to follow the line of engineering thought and materialize these vehicles in-game. Meet the Italian tank destroyers. So I was thinking a map pack for summer, like six new maps from the super test for the summer patch or something. And then these vehicles for like August or September. So we usually get like three months before the yo tanks came to fruition from the super test. So three months, four months. All right. The Italian Army Command had ideas about creating self-propelled artillery guns as far back as the second half of the 1930s. However, initial experiments were unsuccessful, mainly because of the attempts to mount a 75mm gun on a light tank chassis. Sometime later, the German army started using the Stuhl III. This vehicle was of keen interest to the Italians and inspired them to try creating their own self-propelled gun again. Together with the engineers from the Ansaldo Engineering Company, the Italian army managed to create a prototype, the Semavente M41. Ugh. Its look and idea resembled its analog, the Stuhl III. A non-rotating cabin was mounted instead of the turret and turret platform, and a 75mm howitzer was put there. The main series of this tank destroyer was produced on the Carol Amato M1441 medium tank chassis. Due to this, the vehicle in the game will have low maneuverability, but excellent concealment and view range. The transition to the tank destroyer branch will be available from the tier 4 P2640 medium tank. That's why the Semavente M41 will help players smoothly adapt and adjust their playstyle for the following tank destroyers of the branch. Tier 6 is occupied by the Semavente M43 Basotto. The development and production of this vehicle started when the Italian command belatedly started to realize that enemy tanks had clearly improved their armor protection and armament characteristics. The solution should have been the Semavente M43 tank destroyer. Gameplay-wise, it resembles the previous vehicle of the branch. The differences are in its armament. This TD is armed with a 102mm gun with high accuracy and penetration, which allows it to easily cause damage to heavy vehicles at a distance. So, one of the few tier 6s that actually has above a 100mm caliber gun. Alright, sure. Interesting. Does it have pen? That's the main question. Its armor compared to tier 5 has also improved, but you shouldn't rely on it in close combat. In general, the first two vehicles of the branch are classic tank destroyers with a cabin. They are slow with good armament and average armor for their tiers. However, the subsequent vehicles can't be compared to regular ones. They're completely new tank destroyers with unique features that will unlock from tier to tier. Tier 7 is represented by the Semovente Contra Carol Mod 1956. The vehicle was designed after World War II and doesn't resemble the previous TDs in the branch much. This is mainly because Italian tank building came out of hibernation and the revision of its concepts began in the 1950s. American designs with some additions formed the basis of the new TD project. First off, the vehicle received a rotating turret with a limited gun traverse arc of 60 degrees and excellent gun depression angles. Secondly, a drum-type autoloader was installed for a 105mm gun. And lastly, the vehicle received excellent frontal armor that allowed for close-range combat. The Semovente Contra Carol Mod 1956 clearly shows what the gameplay of the following vehicles in the branch will be. The next so it's like an E4 without the tumor on top. Yeah, I mean, it's a heavy tank, practically, I guess. Or like an AMX Fosh or something. <laughs> okay. TD is the Contra Caro 167. Work on this vehicle began in the 1960s when Italy cooperated closely with German and Swiss industries. However, tank destroyers were generally becoming a thing of the past at that time, losing to anti-tank missile armaments. So it was no coincidence that this TD remained in the preliminary design stage. In the game, this vehicle acquires a more modern look while keeping the rotating turret feature. Now the gun traverse arc is not 60 degrees, but 90, 45 degrees to either side. The frontal armor is stronger compared to tier seven and this affects the vehicle's mobility accordingly. It doesn't turn into the T95, but it'll be difficult to change positions in it quickly. The Contra Caro Mod 67 is armed with an accurate 120mm gun with a drum type autoloader and 10 degrees of gun depression. The vehicle has an interesting exterior feature, a noticeable slope of the turret ring. In reality, such a solution will allow for a more rational vehicle layout. The crew could be in the cabin without increasing the height of the vehicle itself. In the game, such a design allows for blocking damage from behind cover while not decreasing gun depression on the sides, which happens in some tanks or turreted tank destroyers. There are still cupolas on top. It's not as big as something out of a uh, Fosh, for instance, but those are probably still weak spots. So, still like an E4, but not as big of a tumor as an E4. Okay. At tier 9, there's Contra Caro 1 MK2. The idea of this tank destroyer was inspired by joint American and German developments that corresponded with Italian views on tank destroyers. The concept of a tank destroyer with partial turret traverse, average mobility, and excellent frontal armor was also implemented for this vehicle. What changed is its gun. The caliber increased to 127mm, but the autoloader remained. Due to the sum of all its characteristics, the Contra Caro 1 MK2 is an excellent candidate for the penultimate vehicle of the branch. The peak of Italian engineering, however, is the Contra Caro 3 Minotauro. You can see the influence of both American and German tank building in this vehicle. This tank destroyer embodied all the ideas that were developed by the previous tank destroyers of this branch. A rotating turret with a limited gun traverse arc of 90 degrees and 10 degrees of gun depression. Excellent frontal armor that is well in balance with the vehicle's mobility. And the 130mm gun with an autoloader. But that's not your regular autoloader. Five shells, good damage per shot. Holy crap! That's... 
2,650 damage with 5 rounds. It's a 24 second reload for the clip, but the intershell reload is 8 seconds. So it takes 8 seconds for a 500 alpha. That is pretty good, but it's practically a heavy tank without a fully traversable turret that they categorize as a tank destroyer. Okay, I mean, sure. 24 seconds to reload the entire drama, and 8 seconds between the shots. You can hardly say this is something classic. And if all these characteristics might look strange on paper, the Italian can also surprise you in practice. You should play this vehicle as a regular tank with a cyclic gun. With its alpha damage and reload, one drum is enough to outshoot many opponents. Yes, you'll pay for it with a reload of the entire drama, but first of all, it takes only 24 seconds, and secondly, the enemy will never know when exactly you're reloading. At any moment of battle, and in any situation, opponents can't just track how many shells you have. You can start reloading after three shots, so the countdown starts. The enemy counts eight seconds before your next shot. They may think that you're hesitating for a few seconds. A few more seconds to roll out. Mutual intimidation and so on. And only then comes the moment your opponent realizes you are reloading. But what they didn't take into account is that there's little time left until the reload is complete. Such a concept of the autoloader makes the Minotauro an absolutely unique vehicle, and most importantly, it makes it a vehicle that you should always be aware of, because in theory, facing the Minotauro means always facing a vehicle that will win in a duel. And even if the opponent manages to figure it all out, count all seconds, and think of all the options in their head, they will also need to penetrate your TD. So this is what makes the new Italian an excellent vehicle for close-range combat. It's ready to dictate the terms of battle, it's ready to adapt to the enemy's style, and it's ready to win. In addition to researchable vehicles, the Italians will also have a Tier 8 premium tank destroyer. This will potentially be the Semavente Contra Caro Mod 1964 Vipera. Work on this combat vehicle should have turned into the development of turreted tank destroyers, conducted by the Auto Malara Company. Unfortunately, this vehicle remained in the draft stage. One of the reasons was the appearance of a new, more promising project. However, such an interesting vehicle couldn't yet appear in the game. So it's the Semavente Contra Caro Mod 1964 Vipera that heads to the super test first, based on which the characteristics of the whole branch will be adjusted while keeping the overall concept. In terms of gameplay, the vehicle will resemble a researchable Tier 10 TD, but its characteristics will clearly refer to the researchable Tier 8 vehicle. The Tier 8 Contra Caro Mod 67 features decent dynamics and armor, plus it has a menacing 120mm gun with a 5 shell autoloader. The familiar gun depression angles of 10 degrees and a rotatable turret with a gun traverse arc of 90 degrees. Just like the Tier 10 TD, this vehicle is fit for combat on the front line. It also features an unconventional autoloader. The reload of 8 seconds between shots and a high damage per shot allow for winning one-on-ones against many opponents. However, also like the Tier 10 TD, this premium vehicle will have a deterring factor, drum reload. But unlike in regular tanks with the autoloader, the reload won't keep you away from battle for too long, so you can reset your drum at any time. For example, when you realize you don't have enough shells to finish off an opponent, or when you plan to destroy one enemy vehicle and switch to another one right away. In such situations, you can start reloading right in the middle of battle. At the same time, due to the atypical reload between shots, your enemy still doesn't know what you're doing. Reloading one shell or the entire drum, and when they out, you're nearly ready for a new duel. It's hard to say which characteristics of this vehicle will be final. That's what tests are for. But it's already clear that the branch will have some unique gameplay, and the future premium vehicle will be among the first to help you get familiar with it. We plan to create a special group of tank destroyers with strong armor, rotating turrets, and an also loader. This means their unpredictability in combat, depending on the tactics, will depend solely on you. These vehicles will be set very carefully to keep them in general balance, make them memorable, and most importantly, bring you new and interesting experiences. <clears throat> Goes to show you how kind of underperforming the E4 is, mostly because of the tumor, but. Imagine the E4 with the autoloader. Yeah, that would be work. That would be pretty cool, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so starting with the P26/40, I have to buy this thing again. Oh god. <laughs> well, if you already research most of the tech tree, just wait and get blueprint missions from the daily mission tab, and you automatically unlock the pieces. So just wait a little bit for those missions to completely research the whole line for you, but that's what I did with the Yo tanks. Never even played the Yo tanks. Okay. Um It's like a E4 with upsides. I mean eight seconds for a five hundred alpha burst. It's pretty good of a gun, but you cannot always shoot with that DPM, otherwise it's pretty crazy, right? So you can always have 8 seconds for 500 alpha, that is way too broken of a tank destroyer. So they give it a cap of 5 rounds, so... Okay, I mean you're still going to get flanked and other stuff like the E4, but... The tumor is not as big, so there's an upside. You play this thing like the E4, like the E3, but you have a... Pseudo traversable turret like the E4 or FE4005 stage 2 in a sense or like the challenger at tier 7 for the Brit So if you're mounting the 32 pounder All right, but here is the Vipera um, Six seconds 36 seconds for the whole clip, but there are five rounds. I Thought it was eight seconds not six but, I mean, if it was 6 seconds between each shot, that's like 
4,000 DPM for the 5 rounds. So when you finish that 5 rounds, the DPM cuts off, but for that 5 rounds, you have 4,000 DPM, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> I think it was 8 seconds. 6 seconds is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's, it's not 6 seconds. Penetration for a heavy tank, that's good. Penetration for a tank destroyer, not that good. So you play this thing like a heavy tank. You could use gold shell, but I am seeing this vehicle like the Skrida T-56. A gold shell scum magnet, a magnet of a tank. So scumbags always use gold with the vehicle even though they don't need it. Uh, we'll take a closer look at this vehicle later on, but overall, it's alright. I mean, it's like another dildo. I don't want another dildo. I want more places to put my dildos in, right? <laughs> Great metaphor. Great metaphor, Sam. <laughs> alright, moving on. So we already talked about the Tiger 2 skin, the E-75 skin. They just added... The Chieftain Prototype and the TS-54 to the second iteration of 1.17. So we'll quickly take a look, but I'll put a more in-depth video of these vehicles. So this is a Tier 9 Premium. So makes more credit at Tier 9, like the STRVK or the WZ-114. But from my initial glance, this is a whole lot better than the WZ-114. A whole lot better. So it's like a up-tiered FE4202 in a sense. Close enough. I mean, it has better frontal turret armor than the FE4202, obviously. But hull armor is still 80, so garbage. And we'll do this in more details for its own specific video. But cupola is big. Frontal hull is still 160-ish. To 120 for the lower plate. Yeah, you'll get pinned. Also, the roof on top of the gun, it's only 40. So you'll be overmatched with high caliber guns. Any caliber that's above 120 will pin. Automatically pin. So, it's only 40. Jeez. <laughs> it's relatively okay in terms of horsepower per time ratio, but nothing fancy. So, it's no Concept 1B. And top speed is still not Concept 1B. <laughs> it's not a Concept 1B. But it is a premium, so bleh. It's a heavy tank, no camo, 400 meters of view range. So, yeah, we'll talk more in depth or details on this vehicle later. But the second hidden vehicle is a TS-54. It is the double barrel 32 pounder American heavy tank. Uh, I mean, why cannot the MTLS have the double barrel feature even though it's twin 50 calibers or something? <laughs> Actually, it's not twin 50 cal, it's like 37 cannons? Give me a sec. It's not the first American tank with dual barrels. What the hell is the MTLS? It's a... 40 millimeter or 37. 37. Yep, it's a th I thought it was 20 caliber. <laughs> it's not a 20 millimeter. It's not a 50 caliber running around. That's the T7 combat car. So, not the first, like I mentioned it. But. Ah. Well, 200 millimeters pen for a tier 8 premium it doesn't really cut it nowadays. I mean, it's good if it was like five years ago or seven years ago but it doesn't cut it nowadays nowadays you need about 220 at least so meh 280 alpha double shot accuracy is crap aim time is crap even though it's only a 94 millimeter it's a 94 millimeter two of them but still crap uh preparation time is all right it's only 2.5 it could be better but Block time is 6, so you have to wait 6 seconds before starting to reload for 8 seconds. So, bleh. And it's only like 560 alpha burst. So DPM is not all that hot. And you cannot mount a rammer, so unfortunate. 
So you probably will use something like turbocharger, vents, maybe like enhanced gun gunner sights to reduce the the dispersion. The accuracy is kind of yeah if for only a 94 millimeter. Now armor wise for this vehicle, it's good for the turret, but there are a lot of weak spots. Yeah, the range finders are pretty crap as well as the cupola. So. Only 150, and there are two of them, so you kind of hide it on both sides. Upper plate is only about 200, lower plate it's about 200. It has better hull armor than <laughs> the Chieftain prototype <laughs> at tier 8 compared to tier 9. But it is a premium, so it makes more credit and crew XP and other stuff. But we'll go more into details of these two vehicles later on. So I'll take a closer look, but horsepower down ratio... Top speed, not that spectacular. It's slow, iffy. It's like a Tiger II. Is it like a Tiger II? Let's see. 11.5 with... Actually, it's better horsepower per time ratio, but... Oh God, they nerfed the engine. I totally forgot they, <laughs> they nerfed the engine power of German tanks. Because Germans. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, they nerfed the engine power. So, it's a little bit faster than Germans, but that's not saying much. Is it like a KV-4? In terms of horsepower per ton and... Uh, top speed. Close enough! <laughs> it's no IS-2-2, it's no ISM. Yeah, ISM has better horsepower per ton. It's like a KV... It's not even like the KV-4 Krv... Uh, my allergies made me not pronounce names. Krzlovsky's... Sure. <laughs> it's like a KV-4 in terms of mobility. But it has two guns, so... Oh, there you go, folks. The hidden vehicles of... Second iteration of 1.17. So, we'll take a closer look with videos coming up. And we'll take a closer look at the Vipera. Or the Italian Tier 8 Premium Tank Destroyer. But for now, still no word on the three candidates for Season 8 of Battle Pass. So I took a look again. It's still only the Tiger 2 skin and the E75 skin. Uh, nothing else. No candidates for the Season 8 lineup as well as hidden stuff. So yeah, alright. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. So like I said... <laughs> I don't want more dildos. I want more places to put my dildos in. <laughs> exactly. Best metaphor. So hopefully we'll see the maps from the next test in June. But, I mean, if everything goes well, perhaps like summer, August, late July, we get the map pack that we desperately need. And then we're, we're getting like the Italian... Tank destroyers for like October or something or September? Hopefully, I don't know. But for now, eh, sure, more dodos. Wonderful to play with. Shove it up your ass. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Day with eyes that know the darkness in my soul.